Hey, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get rid of GitHub Copilot completely from your machine and totally rely on open source models within VS Code as your AI coding assistance. Now to do that, we're going to use a couple of tools. The first one is going to be VS Code, which we'll use as our code editor. We'll also use a VS Code extension called Continue, which is a kind of GitHub Copilot equivalent that allows you to talk to both the commercial models and open source models via Olama, which leads us into Olama. We're gonna to need to be able to run that on our machine. And we're gonna need a bunch of models that we will run within Olama, namely Llama 3, uh, Star Coder 2, and the new cadastral model from Mistral, which is an amazing 22 billion parameter model, which generates absolutely awesome code as you're gonna see later on in this video. But we will also connect it up to Mistral's platform as well. Not only am I gonna show you how to get started, but I'm gonna go a little bit under the hood and show you what's actually happening in the background within Continue, but I will also show you a little bit of the difference between chat models and fill in the middle models, such as Star Coder or Cadestral. And with that, let's get started. So as I said before, you're gonna to need to install Alama locally on your machine. If you haven't got it installed already, go to alama.com and then just click on the download button. If you want to deep dive into Alama, I have a whole video on that and you can go check that out. And it really goes into the details of how Alama works underneath the hood. Once you've got Alama installed, you're going to need a few models to be able to work with and continue. So the first one you're going to need is Llama 3, which is kind of the default. If I just do Alama run Llama 3 there, it will actually download the model. I've already pre got it downloaded. And then you can see I can interact with the model. So if I say something like hello, it will say hello, it's nice to meet you. And I can write something like write me a hello world in react and then it's going to come back with a pretty good example there so that is me working with llama 3 specifically the 8 billion parameter model running locally on my machine now i'll probably show you a little bit of the difference between llama 3 8 billion parameters and llama 3 70 billion parameter model uh, and that will also show you how good the cadastral model is. Um, you probably won't be able to run that on your machine because you need a pretty powerful machine to make that work. But if you do an Olama run 370B, uh, you will see it runs on my machine because I've got 128 gigs. And again, I can interact with that, say something like write me a React component uh, and we'll see what it comes back with. You see the difference between Llama 3 70 billion parameter model and the 8 billion parameter model. It is much slower. I mean, it's actually got a lot more power to it. It's a much smarter model, especially for things like reasoning. But you can see the difference in latency because it's a much larger model. It's just taking a lot longer to come back. So 70 billion parameters is good for things like chat, but as you can see, it's quite slow. And that's why when we're working with continue, the chat model that we'll be generally using is Llama 3 as a sort of standard default. That's what its standard is, 8 billion parameter model, just because it's a lot faster and you don't have to wait for the responses. And it also runs on most people's machines as well. You don't need a powerful machine to run it. Now, the next model that we're going to need is a default fill in the middle model. It's not a chat model. I'll explain what that is a little bit later. But if I just do an old Llama run at star coder uh, 2, that is a 3 billion parameter model. So same sort of size as kind of uh, code Gemma. Again, you could use code Gemma because that's a fill in the model as well. But Star Coder is probably slightly better as it is today. But that might change in a few weeks when Google released their latest version. So if I just say something like, write me a React component uh, that returns hello world. Although it's not a chat component, it will come back. You see it's very, very fast. Uh, and it does a pretty good job of that. I probably don't really like the React that it's producing there, but you can see it's okay. But it's a three billion parameter model, so you're not gonna expect brilliant results from it. And then the last thing that I am gonna wanna run, if you can run it on your machine, if not, we'll run it on the platform a little bit later on, you can also run uh, Cadestral. So if I run that for a second and then say, write me a uh, React uh, component that returns Hello world. You can see it's going to come back with a pretty nice React component there, which I like. It's a functional component. And that's from the new Cadestral 22 billion parameter model running on my local machine. So with that, I've got everything that I need to get installed. Probably one of the things that we'll discuss a little bit later is that Cadestral model is both a chat model 
and it's also a fill in the middle model as well. Again, I'll explain what that means a little bit later. So that's what we need to get started with. We need Llama 3, we need Cadestral, and we need Starcoder 2. So as I said before, Continue is a GitHub Copilot replacement. It's completely open source, and it's available as a VS Code extension or as a JetBrains extension as well. So if you go to continue.dev, just click on uh, VS Code there, and then it's gonna take you to VS Code Marketplace. You can click on Install, open that up in Visual Studio Code, and then just click on the Install extension. And once that's installed, we can just get rid of this, and then we will start from scratch. So I am gonna uh, have a new folder. It's gonna be called uh, Continue Cadestral Record. You can see it's an empty folder at the moment. There's nothing in there, and we will open up VS uh, Code there and we'll start uh, seeing how this works underneath the hood. Now that we've got continue installed, within VS Code, you can see I now have this continue tab here. So one of the things I can do is I can configure it to whichever models I want. So if I click on the plus button here, for example, you see there's a ton of the commercial providers and that's everything from OpenAI, Anthropic, Mistral, which we will connect to a little bit later, Llama if I wanna connect locally, which is what we're gonna do, but I can also access things like Grok, et cetera, or Google Gemini. So uh, we will connect to Llama because uh, we've got that running locally on, on this machine. So I'm just gonna select that. There is an option here which is kind of auto detect, which allows me to pick any of the models from my list, um, or I can pick a particular model that I want to use. Now, in this case, I'll just select auto detect. And then you see when I do that, it automatically opens up this config.json file. And I think that's a pretty important file to get uh, familiar with here. So you can see here in the models, it's got this auto detect title of llama. And then you see the API base is localhost 11434 and the provider is a llama. If I actually just uh, click on this for a second and open this up, you can see Olama is running on 11434. And the reason is when I run Olama on my local machine, it automatically has an OpenAI compatible uh, host running within there. And then it serves up the models and I can send prompts via a REST API. And that is exactly what is happening here. So all that Continue is doing is when it's interacting uh, with third-party models, it is just essentially calling a uh, endpoint via an API. And that's similar when it's talking to OpenAI, et cetera, or Anthropic, it's doing the exact same thing. The other thing to notice here is there is a tab autocomplete model. We'll go through that in a little bit second, but that is uh, how the fill in the middle or the tab completion works. So you see by default is actually default into star code 23B, and again, using Olama. And again, you can pick any sort of fill in the middle model compatible that you want. Now, for anyone who's security minded, uh, continue actually send anonymous telemetry uh, to uh, their backend servers or to their post hoc servers. So if you don't want to send any kind of telemetry there, you can just uh, set that to false there and then it's not going to send anything to their servers. They're actually pretty open about what they uh, send there. So if you go to docs.continue.dev telemetry, it tells you exactly what they're utilizing. They say it collects and reports anonymous usage information. They send it to a kind of post hoc server. It tells you exactly what it uh, tracks there. Uh, and actually, if you want to see exactly what they're sending, you go to uh, GitHub Continue Dev uh, custom host uh, post hoc provider and you can see exactly what they're sending within the code and that's the advantages of kind of open sources they're completely open and you can look at exactly uh, what people are sending to their back-end servers but I, I think what they've got is a pretty good uh, kind of policy there but uh, again you can just switch it off if you don't want anything to be uh, sent there now if we come back into uh, VS uh, code for a second and by the way if you want to look at this file itself you can see it's in this dot continue uh, folder in the config JSON. So if I just go into cd.continue and then maybe I open up in VS Code, you can see there is the config JSON that we were looking at kind of two seconds ago. And we'll return into this folder a little bit later. So, but before we do that, let's, um, let's come back to uh, our tab here. So one of the things that we can do is just chat with the model. Before we do that, I'm just gonna create a new file called uh, hello.py. Uh, and then we'll use that to put some kind of code in here. So 
First thing that I am gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this tab and then I'm just gonna interact with the model. So I'll say something like, uh, hello. You can see if I want to, I'll just set the model it's gonna interact with is Llama 3.8b. And if I hit enter there for a second, you see it's just came back with a friendly, hello, it's nice to meet you. So I can just chat with that model as I would do in something like Llama. And then similar, if I connect it up to an anthropic model or uh, OpenAI's GPT models, I could chat with that in the same way. But there is some fundamental differences. And one of them is when I write code, I can then work with my code editor. So if I say something like, write me a hello world uh, function uh, in Python, And you can see that's came back pretty fast there. It's got this nice piece of code there, def hello world, print hello world. And if I want to, you see this piece here, I can copy that code, or if I want to apply it to the current file or insert it at the cursor, there is a difference between the two. I'll talk about that in a second, but let's select insert it cursor. You can see that is now put in there. And now if I run Python uh, hello.py, you see it comes back with hello world. Now, if I want to, I can come back into the .continue folder. And if I go into this dev data folder, uh, we can actually see some of the interactions that we've been making here. So as you see here, we'll ignore that star coder one there um, because I'd, I'd obviously had that defaulted there before. But you see here is an interaction with Llama 3.8b. Uh, it's generated uh, 27 tokens, and that was the hello that I originally put in. And then you can see there that it's actually, uh, I asked it to write that um, piece of React code, the hello world, and it's generated that out. So I can see the interactions with the model and you can see it's interacting with the chat model there. Now, if I come back in here for a second and then maybe I say uh, change hello world output so it says, hello, Chris. And you can see it says, here's the modified hello world function that outputs hello, Chris. And now this is where the difference between the apply to current file and the insert it cursor appears. So I could just delete this and then uh, click on insert it cursor. But if I want to, I could just say apply to current file. And you see when I click apply to current file, it's actually deleted the old hello world that I had and now it's inserted in the hello Chris. And it's given me a few options here to accept the change or reject the change. So I will just say accept all, and now I will save that. And then we can run that code one more time, and it's now saying hello Chris. And now if I come back into my tokens generated JSONL, you can see that it's now got the uh, prompt tokens 284, and then it's got a new set of generated tokens because I've made that change. Now, let's go a little bit further than that. So let's come back into uh, VS Code and look at what we had here. Now I'm gonna try and do something a little bit different. So rather than using the 8B model, let's say I switch this to the Llama 370 billion parameter model. I'll create a new session and I'll say, write me a hello uh, friends function in Python. Let's see what this comes back with. This time I'm using a much more powerful model, which is Llama 370B. I'm running it locally on my machine. You see it's much, much slower, right? And this is the downside of reusing a really powerful model, although it might generate great code. Uh, the problem that uh, we have there is it will actually take a lot longer to come back, um, especially on my machine here. So, and again, it's giving you more options here, like you could have a, something a little bit more interaction, how many friends you got, etc. Good old Llama 3. But uh, here, now what I'm now gonna do is just click on this apply to current file again, and then we'll just hit accept all here, save that, and then we can run this one more time, hello, and then it says, hello, friends. Now, if I come back into um, my .continue folder for a second, you can see here that tokens generated is used Llama 370 billion parameter model. So it's tracking exactly uh, what changes I've made. Now let's do something a little bit different here for a second. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna clear this session here, but rather than using the chat window, I am gonna work directly within uh, hello.py. So this time I'm gonna say something like create a uh, hello world function in Python. And then we'll just put that in here. And now if I just give it a little bit of a hint and type in something like def, 
comes back with main, hello world, and then it says if name is equal to main, hit call main. And now if I run Python uh, dot hello dot pi, you see it's came back with hello world, but you saw it was a little bit not as good as what we were getting from Llama 3 a little bit earlier. Let's kind of look at why. So if we come back into our JSONL here, um, you can see a whole different set of changes within this tokens generated file. You see now rather than using Llama 370B or 8B, it's using this star coder model. Um, and that's one of the things you, you really need to be aware of is when you're interacting within the context of your VS Code editor as opposed to the chat area, you're working with the tab completion model or the fill in the middle model, right? As opposed to the chat model. So if you want to get better results, you might be better working with the chat model in the left hand side and then applying it into your VS Code window. Um, but you see there, that's coming back with star code of 23B. And that's why the results were getting a lot worse there because that's a much smaller model. It's not as powerful as something like a Llama 38B or a Llama 370B. Um, and the reason it does that is it actually is what a, you call a fill in the middle model. It's actually trained a little bit differently from um, you know, the chat models. And let me show you what I mean in that sense. So if I got rid of this print hello world here, you can see it's automatically came back with uh, print hello world in that sense. Now if I just change this to hello Chris, and then came back to here, you can see it's now offering me up print hello Chris. And the reason it's able to do that is it's got this sort of create hello Chris function here, and then it's taking the bits afterwards. So it's taking the entire context and then using that to sort of uh, work out what it's gonna come back with next. So another example is if I called this hello uh, Chris, you see it's came back with hello Chris because it knows hello Chris from over here. But now if I come back to this def main here and then just do this, you see it's now offering me hello Chris because it's seen the hello Chris down there um, and then it's offered that as a good completion. Now again, if I come in here and now it says print hello Chris. And that is the fill in the middle part. So rather than using traditional next token prediction, i.e. it sees everything to the left of the next word that you wanna pro provide, what it's actually doing is taking the left hand side and the right hand side. So it's getting the context of the whole function. And then it's got this little token in the middle where it's gonna predict what that is. And you can see that. So if we come back into tokens generated uh, here, you see all of these star coder things here, but if I come into autocomplete there, you're seeing here create uh, create a hello Chris function in Python. Hello Chris, print Chris, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then you see the suffix is, is the hello Chris that we've got. And then it's generated this prompt, you know, fill in the middle prefix, create a hello Chris function in uh, Python, so it's done everything in the right hand side, and then it's giving you the fill in the middle suffix, which is everything on the right hand side. And now it's able to predict what that missing token is. So the way that it is trained is slightly differently. And that is why when you are in the editor mode, because you wanna look at the left hand side and the right hand side, that's why the tab completion models are different from the chat models. And again, one of the reasons that you tend to use a smaller model, such as like a kind of three billion parameter model like star coder, is speed of response is really, really important. So it's gotta come back super, super fast. And of course, the bigger the model is, remember what I showed you with Llama 370B, it was so slow coming back. That's just gonna to take too long for people to care about. So it's just gonna to be too slow. Uh, and that latency will be high and therefore people won't want, wanna wait for the results. And this is why you've got two different models running kind of in parallel. And again, this also means you can do really cool things as well. So if I just select the hello Chris here for a second, uh, if I want to, I can hit uh, command L and I can come into the chat. It brings the hello Chris into the chat here. See so print hello Chris. And then if I want to, I can just uh, hit slash there. And remember those uh, tags that we had? Remember there was one that was called uh, test, which was able to, uh, if I came back in, 
into my config JSON for a second. Um, if you look here, remember this custom commands test? That is actually uh, what's going on here. So this is actually a prompt to generate unit tests. So if I wanted to, I could create my own custom commands uh, here. So if I wanted to generate unit tests, it will actually use that prompt when I type in uh, forward slash test here. But I'm not gonna generate a unit test for that. One of the things that I might be able to wanna do is I could write comments, but maybe I'm gonna do something like uh, rewrite this in French. Okay, so it came back with Bonjour Christophe. So I'm just gonna click uh, apply the current file. Now it's done an okay job of this. As you can see, it missed the uh, the hello Chris part here. But that's my fault because I only selected that one piece. So I can just uh, paste that back in and then we're back to uh, where we wanted to be. So I'm gonna create another file. This time it's gonna be called uh, hello.rs. And this time we're gonna see things really struggle here. So if I write something like create a hello world web server in Rust using Salvo. You can kind of see it's just kind of struggling. And again, this is the problem with running something like a kind of 2 billion parameter model. And it's not the only thing that will struggle there. So if I do something like uh, create a function uh, that downloads uh, the Mistral model from Hugging Face and runs a hello world inference, let's see what it comes back with. Again, I'm sort of getting nothing back at the moment. Maybe I'll give it a hint with def. And again, if I sort of prompt it a little bit more, it's just kind of struggling and it's kind of nonsense and really because we pushed the limits of uh, the system there. So let's try this in something that's a little bit more uh, capable. Let's uh, move to something like cadastral, right? So we'll start with the chat and then we'll ask the same thing here. So if I do something like uh, create a function that downloads Mistral model from Hugging Face and runs a hello world inference. Now I'm just gonna insert that to the current file. Now if I just select insert cursor there, hit save. Um, rather than using uh, 0 0.1, I'm gonna use 0 0.3 because I know that's on my machine. Um, but if I now run python hello.py, you can see there, <laughs> out of the bat from the chat model, using the new cadastral model running locally on Olama, it's actually generated me a piece of code that works out of the box using Hunger Vase Transformers to create uh, kind of hello world. Now that is insane, and that's probably one of the big differences. This is a kind of great model, but one of the things that's really cool about this is I can actually use that as my fill in the middle model as well. So if I now come back into uh, my uh, configuration. So this time, let's open up my config file. I'm gonna change this so rather than using the starcoder 23b model, I am gonna use um, the uh, cadastral model here. We'll just say cadastral. I'm gonna save that. So I've restarted things. And now if I go into hello.py, we'll get rid of this. And I'm gonna type the same thing. So I'm gonna say create a function that downloads uh, the Mistral model from Hugging Face and runs a hello world inference. So remember I'm running this locally. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a hint here. So I'm just gonna type in from so that you can see that I want some Python code there. Uh, and it's gonna import torch there, that's fine. Let's give it a little bit more run. Run hello world. And again, I'll just fix this up a little bit again. So I'm just gonna set this to be 0 0.3. I'm gonna set this to be 0 0.3. We'll tidy up the comments there a little bit. And then as you see, that is pretty good. There's a little bit of the tidy up here. I don't need to do that torch CUDA empty cache there. Now, if I just run this 
one more time. And you see it's interacted with the Mistral 0.3 model there. And that is working code. And that is the difference between running a very, very capable model at 22 billion parameters versus a 3 billion parameter model. But you would have noticed a big major difference there. And that major difference is that even though I'm running this on my local machine, that that model ran really, really slow. I was waiting a lot of time there on a llama to come back with those answers. So even though it generated better code, it just took quite a long time to get the answers back. So that is probably going to be the big issue with running cadastral as something like your fill in the middle model. I would probably say the better thing to do in this case would be to, if you're going to run that locally, is to use something like cadastral as your kind of chat model because it's re it's really good as a chat model. It's going to get better results and things like Llama 3, but it is... Uh, going to be quite slow as the fill in the mi middle model. Now what you can do in that sense, let's just create a new session, is if you want to, you can always connect up to uh, Misral's uh, La platform and then use their SAS model there. So if I select this here for a second, it's going to want an API key. But if you go to uh, console uh, dot uh, Mistral dot AI, um, you can sign up for a kind of free trial there and then you can get access to cadastral. You Again, you need to agree with this. Uh, by the way, I, in, in, just in case you're thinking, haha, I'm gonna steal your key, um, I will uh, change that key before uh, this video goes out. So if I select the key that I've built here, now if I come back into VS Code, put my API key in there, I'm gonna say I'm gonna want access to cadastral. You can see now it's put cadastral here as my API platform as an option there. Um, if I want to, I can just copy this here and then I am gonna take that and I'm gonna uh, just replace uh, this within my tab completion model. Um, and then we will just save that there. So that's now in my config JSON. And now if I come back into uh, my uh, code there for a second, let's take this entire piece one more time. We'll paste that in, hello world inference. And again, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a hint. And you can see it's running a lot faster, right? And that's just because the SAS model is running a lot faster than my machine. And we'll run that. Fix a little bit of the formatting up here. Hit save. We'll just run this one more time, python.hello.py. And there you go, it's interacted with the model and it's came back with a kind of hello world there. So I think the cadastral model is super powerful. Is it really there as your kind of fill in the middle model? For me, probably not. I probably stick with star coder just because I want a little bit of speed there uh, coming back. It's not quite got the inference speeds that I would want, but it's kind of pretty good good in that sense. Um, but certainly as a chat model, cadastral is really, really good. And again, we can sort of see that. So if I go to, um, let's, let's come back into kind of chat mode for a second. So if I open up the continue tab and then I write something like create a hello world uh, web server in Rust using Salvo, let's just see uh, what that comes back with. And again, you see that it's coming back pretty fast here. I'm using, I'm talking to the platform at this point rather than uh, running it locally. Um, but you see it's coming back pretty fast, right? And now you see their macro use external and create salvo. This is really good code, by the way. It's got the handler prefix there. It's Tokyo main and it's making the calls there. Funnily enough, if I was to do the same thing in uh, something like Llama 3. So let's just uh, create a brand new session in this sense, hit new session. Um, this time, rather than talking to Cadestral, I'm gonna run this against uh, Llama 3, even the 70 billion parameter version. Now you can kind of see this came back, but it's not quite to the level that I would really want there. So it's, it's sort of got itself into a bit of unwrap, runs, awaits, unwraps there. But the code is is pretty close. You can see that Cadestral has actually made a much better job. But again, even if I want to, and it was much slower in the running as well. But if I want to, I can then also make this uh, run against the, uh, let's do a new session, but I can run the exact same this time against Cadestral against the Llama. We'll just run the same thing. 
And you can see that's much faster than Llama 370B. Um, and I'm going to get the same answer as I'm getting from kind of the platform as well. So it's got the correct uh, dependencies there. Uh, it's got the preludes correctly. Uh, this is really good code. It's much, much better than uh, what would be coming back uh, from Llama 3, which is a much 70 billion parameter model, which is much, much bigger. Again, if I create a new session and then I switch that to something like a Llama uh, 3, 8 billion parameter, and this time ask the same question, uh, you're going to see what I'm going to get back is probably it's much faster, but it's complete nonsense, right? This isn't salvo code. It's just made a complete mess of it. So cadastral model is really, really good in that sense. So I think setting that to a chat model would, would work really well. The downside is cadastral is not really uh, usable for uh, commercial stuff. It's meant to be for research only. They do offer commercial licenses, um, but it is not fully open source in that sense. But I think I think this is kind of really, really kind of cool stuff. And again, it's not just, um, it, and again, it's not just things like Rust there. I get even good results for things like React as well. We showed Python a little bit earlier as well. So if I come into, uh, let's say, cadastral in this sense, file llama, and this time I'm going to say create an app uh, in React uh, that on the click of a button uh, increments the counter and sends the telemetry to the URL counter dot chris hay uk dot io so we'll run this again my fans are going like crazy because i'm running all of this uh, locally on my machine um but if we run that there for a second you see it uh comes back pretty good there um and i'm going to get some pretty good react code but if i ask llama 3 the code isn't going to be as good as coming back from cadastral and there we go it's came back with the answer there create react app counter app etc it's given you the counter there i don't like the fact that it sort of says rest of the component there but i can live with that there's the handle click set count send the telemetry to chris a uk blah 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 um and then there's my own click there so i mean that's kind of pretty good within that sense. Again, I can access this. This is the nice thing about Kodesh because it's fill in the middle as well. I can run this from over here, but again, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a kind of frustrating experience. So, let, I mean, let's try it. So let's uh, come in here. We'll create something like hello.jsx, uh, uh, and then we'll just put uh, this here and we'll give it a hint with the import and then let's see what it comes back with and again it's doing a pretty good job there and there you go it came back with that that was pretty quick it's done a pretty good job there there's no way you would get such a response from something like star coder but again using this sort of interaction between the chat model and the fill in the mo middle model I think you're going to get sort of better results rather than just trying to use fill in the middle within the editor all the time but as I said before, it is pretty good at fill in the middle stuff as well. So again, I mean, if I come back into hello.py there for a second and we hit that command L and then I say something like rewrite all the comments uh, into French and then we hit enter and then I'll just get rid of this and then I'm just going to hit insert there and now it's all got my French comments within there. So there we have it. I think the work that Continue has done is really insane. I think it's a really great uh, AI coding assistant within VS Code. There's a few features I haven't shown you. So things like the fact that it will take your code base and then uh, run embeddings models against that. And then you can query against your code base and it can use the data from your code base to come back with answers. I think that's pretty cool stuff. I haven't gone through that today, but I think that's great. I like the separation between the kind of the fill in the middle model and the chat model and the interaction between the two. So I think that's really good because you get that speed of latency with using your fill in the middle model. Um, I like the cadastral model a lot. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it's not suitable for commercial usage off the bat there. So I think that's kind of problematic, but you see the outputs that it has for a chat model, it is superior to Llama 3, but then Llama 3 still comes back with some really great answers anyway. But again, you can use other models like CodeCoin and things like that as well. Um, the other thing that I would say there is is fill in the mo middle model as great as cadastral is. It's just still a little too slow for my liking, whether it's via the platform or whether it's via um, 
you know, all armor, I think it's still a little bit slow for a fill in the middle model. So I would still be leaning towards something like a kind of star code or two or a code Gemma or a granite or a quiet code Quen. I pick any one of them as a kind of fill in the middle model, but I, I really wouldn't be hitting kind of Kodesh from that point of view. Uh, just because I think the latency is a little bit too hard, but I think it's a good kind of chat model. But again, even Codestral in that sense, great job that Mistral has done there. There's no reason you don't need to use Codestral there. You can still use an Anthropic Cloud. You can use an Olama. You can use uh, a Quen. You can use Llama 3 as your chat model as well. So I, I think regardless, I, I really like how things have been moving on in the space. I think that Continue has done a great job in building a VS Code uh uh, environment that I think is open and and you can add new providers easily. It works with Olama. And then as new code models are coming out, you can kind of just mix and match them in there. And, and again, I think it sort of really starts to challenge the need for something like GitHub Copilot. Anyway, I've been using it quite a bit. I think uh, both the cadastral models and the uh, continue, and I, I really like it actually. I think the functionality is pretty good. And anyway, uh, I think and and I think it's not going to stop there. I think these things are going to get better and faster as things go along. So uh, another sort of great move for the open source community. So anyway, hope this video has been useful, and I'll catch you on the next one.